Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno, the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of advice on how to buy your own fabric if you're going to have a suit made by your own tailor. Okay, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. By doing that, these videos will come right to you. In addition, if you like this, if you find it useful, I would appreciate it if you would like it right down there. And last but not least, make sure to go check out my free 47 page ebook on men's style. Well, I guess the last thing is also check out my free, well, it's not free, it's a premium ebook that's over 600 pages, 400 images, 14 hours of audio. Again, it's not free, but it is pretty awesome. And uh, this actually comes from a gentleman who did buy my premium ebook and he had some more questions and I'm happy to go ahead and make this video for him to thank him for supporting my business. All right. Antonio, I'm a law student from Malaysia. Off the rack suits here are pathetic. The best and most expensive ones I've seen at $800 are 25% wool and 75% polyester. The rest are made from rayon and other things. What are those materials? I'm on a budget, but I have a tailor friend. So the only thing I need is wool fabric and we're going to make my own suit. However, I have a bit of hesitation. I see this fabric online. He sent me to a link to uh, some fabric on eBay, super 180 black gray striped, but it sounds too good to be true. What's your opinion? What should I be looking for whenever I'm buying fabrics online? All right, this is a good question and one I get often as a custom clothier. I'll have people approach me in my business and they'll say, hey, I've got my own fabrics. Can I just send this to you and you and your tailors make it and you just charge me for the build? Most of the time, I, I used to say yes to this, now I'm saying no. And it's it really, this isn't my business model and it's a bit of a headache because there are extra risks I take on for doing this. And I'm gonna go into a bit of detail about why. But let me go ahead and explain what this gentleman in this situation needs to be looking at. He's buying this on eBay, so he needs to look at number one, does he trust the seller? Because he asked the first question was, is this too good of a deal? You know, it, it sounds like it's a great fabric and a Super 180 is, you know, depending on what mill it comes from and what company, that sounds like a pretty high end fabric. And for the price he showed me, it did look like a low price. So he needs to go look at the buyer, the person, or I'm sorry, the person that's selling the fabric and look at their rating, how many times have they sold, what are people saying about them? Because there is the chance if it's, let's say, a deadbolt, and what I mean by a deadbolt is the mills, they'll produce a certain amount of fabric and if they find that, well, there are fabrics like the navy solid, charcoal solid, medium gray solid, I mean, those are going to be made again and again by the mills. But oftentimes mills, they'll make a, a fabric type with a certain type of pattern or just a little bit of an off color that, okay, they're going to wait a few years before they do this. So they make a certain amount of this fabric and then they, they sell it out. But then they've got, when they call these the bolts, basically the uh, the fabric rolled up on a, uh, on a, if you can imagine a toilet bowl, you know, a, <laughs> I don't know what a, a paper towel roll. Imagine that, you know, that's how the fabric comes. And they get to the end of that. And believe it or not, even though they come off the same machine and everything should be the same, the fabrics, unless it's really close, you can sometimes have a little bit of coloration difference. So, they try to, if it's the end of the bolt as well, they're going to try to sell that. And if it's just sitting, you know, it's been sitting in someone's warehouse for a while, they just want to get rid of it. It's inventory, it's costing them money, it's taking up space. And oftentimes you can find these at great deals. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with the fabric. It's just simply the person that has it doesn't really need it because he can't make 20 suits out of it. He can only make one or two suits out of it. So there are great deals to be had, but you need to trust the seller. So look at the seller's rating, understand is this somebody I could trust? That's the number one thing. Because if you can't trust the seller, there all these other factors I'm talking about are going to be mute. Because if they're saying it's 100% wool, it's very hard for you to test that. I occasionally send off, for with fabrics that I'm suspect of, I'll send off to Texas Tech's Textile Testing Center. Yeah, try saying that five times. but. Basically, they do a chemical test and the samples I send cannot come back because they basically dissolve them and they're able to exactly figure out what percentage is wool, what percentage is what other fibers. 
Most people, though, they're going to be trying to do like the burn test, which isn't, it isn't that accurate. And I mean, it gives you an idea, but you really need to know what you're looking for. And unless you've done that hundreds of times, you really don't know what you're looking for. You know, it's like uh, a mechanic can tell you what to look for when you're driving, you're listening to your car, but it's best to take it to a mechanic. And that's the same with, with fabric. So don't try to, uh, and there's very few people in the world I know of who can actually tell something by the bird test. So you want to trust the seller. That's the number one thing because there's a lot of counter fit fabrics. I have had people sell me fabrics and they have lied to my face and told me that this is 100% wool and I go get it tested and it's 50 to 40% wool or even less. Usually I can feel the less, but I can tell you that if something is 70% wool, it's very hard to feel that 30% polyester if it's a really good knockoff. There's some great stuff, some great counterfeit fabrics coming out of China that they say they're 100% wool made in Italy and they're coming right out of, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, so, some of these, uh, these, these factories out of China and, and it's really scary. On the other hand, that's why I deal with people I trust. Okay, let's get into the number two part. So you trust this seller. Well, you want to make sure that you buy enough fabric. I don't know your size. I don't know the pattern in the fabric. So this is going to vary, but usually you want at least 3.5 meters for the average size man. Now, if you're wider, if you're taller, you're going to need more material than that. And I also recommend that you get enough fabric for an extra pair of trousers. Anytime a man has a suit made, I always recommend he gets an extra pair of trousers because your trousers wear out before that. So you're looking at, I would assume, at least five to five and a half meters, maybe even a bit more. And what's going to cause, if, if you're getting a suit made from, a, it has any type of pattern in it, then the tailor needs to be able to batch the, uh, the patterns up. And if he's going to be doing that, he's going to have to use more fabric because, let me think, do I, have a, I, I don't think I have a picture of any, but basically when you lay it out there, if it's a solid fabric, you can put the, uh, the pattern pieces very close to each other. But if it's a pattern, you have to arrange them in a different way and you're going to waste a bit more fabric and therefore you need more fabric. There's also the issue and something that I hate is we've taken fabric from people and it's reacted very strangely under heat. So when you're, shaping the, the suit, whenever you're, you're pressing things, if it, we've had fabrics shrink noticeably and we weren't expecting it, we weren't used to dealing with fabric from this mill and we've had to go back to the client and ask for more fabric. And oftentimes you've got to ask for quite a bit more because you've got to make sure it's a long enough length that you can cut, you can cut the length of a pair of trousers. So, you know, those are some of the headaches you go with. So what you can expect is I would advise you overdo it and you get more fabric than what you think you're going to need because mistakes happen, fabrics react a bit differently. You need to make sure you're testing this. You're going to want to, you know, apply a little bit of heat to it and see how the fabric reacts. The tailor you're working with most likely has never worked with this fabric. So taking all that into account, that's what I would look at whenever you're purchasing the fabrics. Again, you could find some great deals out there, but you need to know what you're looking for and you need to be working with a tailor who's willing to experiment and have fun <laughs> dealing with a new fabric. All right, this has been Antonio Centeno with Real Men Real Style. I will see you guys in the next video. And if you got something to add, I'll see you in the comments. Oh, and don't forget about our Men's Style Q&A website where we are now taking a lot more questions. It's much better than asking questions down here in the YouTube comments. As you guys know, YouTube comments are broke and I can't find questions half the time. So if you go to menstyleqna.com, uh, that's where we're letting the best questions and answers rise to the top. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.